Hey everyone, we got two new global units yesterday, Kresnik and Bulwark. Today we're going to talk about Kresnik first, uh, he's the least exciting of the two and I'm waiting for the wiki to have all the icons for Bulwark too. So it's gonna take a little bit longer but Bulwark is coming tomorrow, the review that is. So today we're gonna talk about Kresnik and why I don't think that he is a good unit at all. So yeah, the overview, Kresnik in his brave uh, base form as a support, just as he is in his brave shift, he really doesn't change much um, regardless of the form. And yeah, because his kit is super bloated and does a lot of things, let's move in game to check him out there. See you in a second. Alright, so instead of using the uh, target dummy for this, I actually have to resort to the actual unit intro quest because I don't have Kresnik myself. It is a little bit easier with Bulwark tomorrow, but yeah, so Kresnik. Um, some things I do want to mention first on because I usually don't mention them in my videos. Kresnik has three weapon types, staffs, May, uh, staffs, rods and daggers and he can we, uh, wear um, light shields, hats, uh, clothes, robes and accessories so it's okay-ish but yeah keep in mind I mean for weapon types it's good as is but yeah the armor types they are a little bit restrictive so a few things I do want to mention right away uh, the limit burst in most of this kit is rather okay, right? So um, one of the things I like about his limit burst is that it removes all buffs from all enemies. That is a perfect dispel. In that regard, it is that is the base form one, by the way. A 140 light magic damage with SBR scaling, which you have to keep in mind. That is the important thing here. Um, he also casts a heal, which nobody cares about. He fixed, he has fixed MP restoration and triggers another heal on the very next turn, which is rather cool. It also fills morale gauge on the very next turn, um, which is also a nice bonus. It doesn't stay in here for some reason, uh, but it is definitely a morale, 2% morale that is coming on the next turn. The magic, nothing too really surprising here. What is not on the list, or let me just quickly look for it. Um, yeah, and the one thing that is not on this list because we are not in a morale battle is Arcane Stimulant. Arcane Stimulant is his morale action and that fills morale gauge by 10%. So we don't have these fixed values of 200 or 600. For example, you find these values at on Elena. But instead it's flat out 10% morale, which is crazy. And the cool thing about this ability is that it auto casts on the very next turn. So just uh, using this on his um, uh, triple cast and all these stuff, it's it's really cool to have, um, here, here it is, viral resistance, it's his triple cast, you can triple cast arcane stimulant every turn and you have 20% a morale gauge every turn which is crazy he's a literal morale and um what's it called a uh, limit burst fill a battery the other skills they aren't really that appealing uh, from my point of view and one of the reasons um is there's an something's amiss there's another arcane supplement is also missing which is, and it's not a morale action actually. So I'm wondering where that is, or am I just blind? Um, hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll find out in a second. But um, as you can see, he's got the medical mastery which is um, his auto revive, it's human typed reduction damage, it's okay, nothing too really special. He's got a sanitizing light attack, which hits twice and on the next turn it's another one. 
It's gradual damage, it's a dot damage. The values there are okay, right? 40x, 100x, that is nothing to scoff at. Although the 100x is a finishing type. So 7-1, it's still Chaos Wave Awakened Frame, so that's good. We've got the Medical Potion here for... Which, honestly, I feel like Medical Potion for this very specific... Um, boss fight in Clash of Wills is rather cool because we all need that fixed MP restoration. The healing, eh, don't really care much about it, but yeah, the morale gain and the fixed MP, that is really cool. We also got the um, resistance stuff, which is nice for healers, right? We've got the antioxidant, which removes all imperils, imperils which is super cool. And is on top a minor light um, uh, amplification and also 250 morale boost. And lastly, oh, this here it is. It's it's not arcane supplement. It's medical medicinal supplement. It's it's a really good skill in the base form. 100 LB boost or 150 uh, with max morale. It should be 150. Well, it is 100. Anyway, uh, one, oh, it's 150 LB boost. Uh, I'm so sorry. So yeah, uh, it's a good ability nonetheless. So, and lastly, we've got his grandest, the grandest sacrificial siphon. Yeah, it's just whatever. All right. So one of the things I do want to mention is that he unlocks via his passives quite a couple of things that are rather neat and I should talk with you about those too. Um, one of them is um, his trust passive miasma resistance or well viral resistance which enables a few things. One of them is that he always fills morale gauge via spiritual therapy. He also has, and that is Blessing of the um, Caductus. So let's look this one up. There it is. It unlocks Holy Panacea, which is a 10 LB crystal fill per turn. It is on his auto attack, I suppose. And it also removes zombie all the time, which is super sweet. Now we can just attack here once with him. And yeah. Zombie cured. Now, if we had a few limit bursts not available, we would see that we filled LB gauge here, but it's fine. All right, Behemoth got hit. But yeah, those are a few things that is really cool about him in his base form. We also have the cool bug now. So yeah, in the brave shift, Kresnik has um, a few more neat details. Let's talk about the. Oh, I was in the. Hmm. Never mind. So in the brave shift, his limit burst changes and it changes a lot. It should. Anyway, his brave shift. Let me quickly see. Exactly. So we've got a very strong limit burst finisher here. It is, no, it's not. It... Wasn't it 1,400x? I'm so confused right now. I was under the impression he had a 1,400x modifier attack, but he doesn't. But that's good to know. So, yeah. So it's a 140x uh, modification with SPR scaling. It's weak. Let's just call it that even though it's cool that he has some form of damage in his ba brave shift it's not really going to help him much and other than that the brave shift is rather identical to um the base form right you still got most of the things you've got the arcane antioxidant now which is pretty much the same thing as before but it's a better light Amplification 35%, it's also 80% all element resistance. The oxidation effect, which is then um, a light, light attack on the very next turn. Over here, six, 60x, as you can see, he takes 500 damage on his own. 
It's neat, but yeah, not so much needed. So the base form and the brave shift, as you can see, they are very much like for like. And yeah, we're gonna talk about Tresnake in the next couple of seconds. Oops. Uh, two, so let I hate this bug so much. And uh, let me just quickly check what the mission is while I'm doing this medical potion. No, that was the base form arcane supplement. Is what I'm supposed to do, so let's do the arcane supplement. And yeah, that pretty much closes out the brief overview of Kresnik's ability. So yeah, it's nothing special, but he's a healer, so. Let's move back to the PowerPoint presentation. All right, let's move on with his Trustmaster and Super Trustmaster. So Kresnik's Trustmaster is a rope that has 20 defense, 70 spirit, pretty good. 15% HP and 15% MP on top, which is decent. And 10% all element resistance, which I personally like. It's a good one. It's kind of trading blows with a rainbow rope. The rainbow rope has le less stats, but more resistances. So, I mean, for a TMR, it's rather good. I do personally like the element resistance, although I would have preferred 20%, it would not have been broken whatsoever. But yeah, it's, it's good. Nothing overwhelming or super surprising. It's just decent. The Super Trust Master, on the other hand, is a hat with 105 a spirit and 15 a defense, and it also boosts MP, HP, and SPR by 30%. So this is a great stat which matches Phasey Super Trust Master. Now Phasey Super Trust Master hat has guts on it, which one may prefer a little bit more than the uh, passive stats, but in most cases your team should not die and the increased stats, especially MP and SPR for those units that care, such as Cetra Arif, they will appreciate this very much. Now, in well, while also already talking about Cetra Arif, well, if there were MP or flat stats on it, it'd be super good. But still, it is a good alternative for Cetra Arif regardless, and basically every spirit-based DPS and or healer unit, of course, and magic tanks. They're also gonna love this. I mean, HP, SPR, high SPR on it. That's good, that's good. I like it. It's, it's a very good STMR to have and to get. The vision card, awesome animation. I mean, the unit design itself is also great. Really, really good. Now, the vision card, my personal favorite of all of Kresnik's kit, because it is super good. It is our first 110 space spirit vision card. And what it also does is it has 25% true single wield spirit um, innate uh, passively on four and seven with no restrictions attached. And if the unit is also a Final Fantasy Brave x unit, they also gain 50% true single wield spirit, which is super good. Units such as Shu Yu, they're gonna love this. Cetra Arif is also gonna love this for sh holy shenanigans, although it doesn't have magic points on it, but it makes it easier for Arif to cap out on spirit, true double hand or true single wield, which may or may not result in higher damage when using this over a say magic points or mp vision card i haven't done the math yet but in theory this should be really really good and generally speaking as a 110 spirit card it is plain awesome i like it a lot i think it's the best thing about kresnik in general and if i were to ever get my hands on kresnik this would be the first thing to get so yeah but with all said of all you've seen so far from Kresnik in the sneak preview of um, that little fight earlier, what is he even good for, right? Because Alum actually killed off healers. None of the content that we have currently really needs a healer. Now, one could make a point that the current Clash of Wills boss, uh, Kairos the Invincible, would like to use have you use a healer, uh, but from what I've gathered and theory crafted so far, a healer is definitely not needed. Now, 
Um, and, and, and that also begs the question, why have a healer in the first place? I know Kresnik was the winner of the healing department, but I feel like they should have made his Brave Shift an actual spirit-based DPS. Because in the base form, he could be that healer type, just like the original Neovision Aerith. She also was a healer or supporter in her base form and a DPS in the Brave Shift. They could have made this work. I mean, it's pretty much the same with Shuyu. So I am left wondering why didn't they? And I feel like it's the greatest oversight and the greatest weakness too of Kresnik. Well, uh, the good things about Kresnik is that he can remove all imperils on demand and it's it's arguably the, one of the best things next to the uh, zombie removal, but come on, zombie. Which boss has zombie other than Aemon? I mean, the last Osta, the last Clash of Woods boss had zombie, but that was on a single unit and you could skip it if you did the fight correctly. So it is... Certainly not needed. It is nice to have, definitely, but you don't need it. And healers have no place in the game and they won't have any place going forward. Even if Clash of Woods suddenly forcibly tries to make it work, there will always be a way to handle a boss without a healer. So yeah, and the other bad thing about Kresnik is that he has totally outclassed stat buffs, totally outclassed limit burst buffs, and the light amp. It's all Aerith that does it better. Aerith's base form limit burst has 400 stats, has 45 light amp, has the light imbue, 250 LB boost. Kresnik just cannot keep up with this. The only thing that Kresnik does better than Aerith is being a unit for Clash of Worlds, but outside Clash of Worlds, I don't see Kresnik being useful at all other than removing imperils, but you then have a dead slot and you'd rather just dispel your whole team as we've always did in the last year or so. Now, yeah, the only good thing that he's got going for him is being an amazing morale battery for Clash of Worlds. And even the killers he has on his kit, I forgot to mention them, but he has a 100% human killer. And that is bad. That is flat out bad. We have original leader. She was three for e up to EX plus three. She has 150 um, human and demon killer on her limit burst. And if you're in Clash of Worlds, you can also gain access to 160 uh, human and demon killer for the entire party via Asur Might. So Presnik, while he tries to condense the role of Brave Shifted Elena and an actual healer, he fails at both things alike. And that is so bad. And I, it's it's just sad seeing such a cool unit being oops, uh, being shafted this much. And yeah, uh, and to add insult to injury, he's also got only a 140x limit burst mod in Brave Shift. It's that bad. So yeah, how does he fare in the middle? From all my ranting, I guess you already guessed it. He maybe a great unit for this particular one clash of woods we have right now but he is utterly useless outside of it maybe he has a usefulness or he has some usefulness as an lb fill battery because when you have him dual wield stuff and equip the aurora scarf kresnik can and will fill 40 lb crystals to the entire party which i feel like is it might be a cool niche, but still you do have that one dead slot who is not going to do literally anything on your team. His LB is five hits and his Chaos Wave frames, well, we don't bring that much Chaos Wave Awakened chainers to Dark Visions or, well, in Clash we do with Yigni and Luis, so that might be fine, but outside of this format, no, just no. And yeah, again, healers are a dead slot. You don't need healers in this game anymore. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, uh, he has zombie cure on demand, which is cool, but it's not relevant anywhere. And the Aemon trial, I, I've released so many videos where you could easily see that the zombie uh, part of it doesn't even matter. And if you were to bring Kresnik to Aemon, all that... Tresnik would be doing is auto attacking. Is that really worth it? I'd rather play around with the actual fight mechanic than try to skip it and have an 
entirely dead slot that is only dedicated to removing zombie just because I'm too lazy to deal with the zombie effect or what? Come on. Don't be that guy. So yeah, should you pull? No. That is the unbiased truth here. You should not pull for Kresnik. He has, uh, it, it really is that meme, just otherwise uh, an unstoppable force meets an immovable object or the other way around, Can don't know which one is the correct way to say this, but an awesome unit design meets a mostly useless kit. And what I'd wager is that you just hope to pull one copy of his to get his vision card sometime and to STMR most likely too, and bench him forever. That is my plan here. I don't see any use for him unless Alem suddenly feels like healer should have a place in this game and make trials that really want you to have a healer, but I don't see this happening. We've, we are struck in a vicious circle of ever so increasing DPS requirements and tanking requirements, but healers, they are dead, sad to say. And yeah, with all of this, Kresnik is the worst, the absolute worst unit we've gotten from FanFest units or fan design units and I feel super sorry for the creator of this unit. Great design, but the unit is really not worth it. And that concludes today's unit review. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one still. And we'll see each other tomorrow for my Bulwark review. And on Sunday, I will hopefully have enough time to tackle Clash of Worlds. I have so many things to do. Uh, I haven't had uh, a spare hour in the last three weeks. Work, university, my paper, the master thesis. Um, it's so much to do. You guys cannot imagine how stressed I am and how little time I have. Uh, it made me depressed a couple of weeks ago because I realized how much time I was losing for all of this and cannot do what I like doing. So I'm out of that rabbit hole, but it's still wearing me down. And I, it was also the reason why I couldn't be bothered to do Dark Visions last week. It was just a one and done and that was it. I just wasn't in the right mindset and didn't have the right feeling for it. And it may happen with Clash of Worlds too, but because most of my projects are done, the thesis is done by Tuesday. My paper is going to be done by Thursday or Friday next week. Um, and yeah, I mean, work is always going to be around, but that's the least of my issues. So most of thing, the things that really stress me out will be done by the end of next week. And from there on out, I will finally be able to push out more content again. So again, thank you all for watching. See you tomorrow for the Bulwark review. Bye bye.